Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh, chaired the fifth session of the Shura Council in the first session of the sixth legislative term. The council was notified of letters received from the Speaker of the Council of Representatives regarding the Council of Representatives' conclusion regarding Decree Law Number 34 of 2022, amending some provisions of Decree Law Number 11 of 1995 regarding the protection of antiquities, and Decree Law Number 44 of 2022, amending some provisions of the Gulf International Bank in cooperation agreement, a Bahraini joint stock company. The council discussed the report of the response committee to His Majesty the King's speech during the inauguration of the first session of the sixth legislative term, which included directives and priorities for the coming period. The council affirmed that the response to the royal speech supports His Majesty's aspirations to perform legislative duties and participate in decision-making to continue the path of achievement and development. The council approved to return the draft response to the royal speech to the committee to include the observations made in this regard during the session and refer it to the council in preparation for submitting it to His Majesty the King. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa received Secretary General of the Council of Arab Interior Ministers Dr. Mohammed Kuman in the presence of Under Secretary of the Ministry of Interior Sheikh Nasser bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa and Deputy Chief of Public Security Major General Dr. Sheikh Hamad bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The Minister welcomed Dr. Kuman and praised the coordinating role of the General Secretariat of the Council of Arab Interior Ministers in developing the Joint Arab Action March in the security field following the implementation of the Arab Interior Minister's decisions. The meeting reviewed the topics that will be discussed in the upcoming session for the Council, in addition to a number of issues related to enhancing joint Arab security. For his part, Dr. Kaman affirmed his pride in meeting the Minister of Interior and praised the Minister's views on developing the cooperation and coordination of Arab security. The meeting was attended by the Assistant Under Secretary for Legal Affairs and the Director of Security Cooperation. The Minister of Interior and the Secretary General honored the winners from Bahrain of the Prince Naif Award for Arab Security. Under the patronage of the National Audit Office Auditor General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the graduation ceremony of the class of 2023 was held, which includes 34 new CFA charter holders organized by CFA Society in Bahrain. Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed expressed appreciation to the CFA Society in Bahrain for their contributions in raising the level of tasks and responsibilities of the approved financial analysis in preparing investment plans, managing financial risks, providing comprehensive investment strategies, managing investment risks, and providing predictions based on accurate foundations about the performance of global financial markets. The society exerts continuous efforts to serve the financial sector and supply the market with experienced human capital capable of increasing investment returns, understanding investment risks, and have a deep understanding of analyzing and financing companies according to the best ethical and professional standards. The CFA certificate is a measure of the competence of financial analysts working in the financial, economic and investment fields and in an internationally recognized certificate. The Labour Market Regularity Authority, the LMRA, conducted a joint inspection campaign in the Capital Governorate in coordination with the Nationality, Passports and Residence Affairs, the NPRA, of the Ministry of Interior and the Capital Governorate Police Directorate. The campaign resulted in reporting a number of violations related to the labour market and residency laws and were referred for legal action. The LMRA stressed its commitment to report any violation through a continuous and intensive inspection plan in cooperation with the relevant government entity. In it, it renewed its call on all members of the society to support the efforts of government agencies to address illegal labor practices. The Kingdom of Bahrain strongly condemned that the Swedish authorities allowed an extremist to burn a copy of the Holy Quran in front of the Embassy of Turkey in Stockholm. In a statement, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs denounced the heinous act, which represents a serious provocation to the feelings of millions of Muslims, an incitement to fueling religious hatred and a violation of international human rights principles and covenants. The Ministry urged the international community to assume its responsibilities in criminalizing acts on calls that incite 
fight extremism and religious or racist hatred, including combating Islamophobia, xenophobia, and anti-Muslim crimes. It also called for preventing any offense to all religions, beliefs, sanctities, and religious symbols, urging constructive cooperation in establishing a culture of peace, tolerance, mutual respect, dialogue, and coexistence between nations, religions, and civilizations. Meanwhile, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia strongly condemned that the Swedish authorities allowed an extremist to burn a copy of the Holy Quran. The Saudi Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed the need to spread the values of tolerance and coexistence. The UAE also condemned the act and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation stressed the UAE's rejection to anything that contradicts humanitarian and moral values and called on the need to respect religions and spread the values of peace and coexistence. Oman's Ministry of Foreign Affairs also expressed deep condemnation condemnation to such acts that incite violence and hatred and affirmed that the need to unify international efforts in order to consolidate the values of peaceful coexistence. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the OIC, also condemned the heinous act of right-wing extremists in Sweden by burning a copy of the Holy Quran. The OIC warned that this provocative act commit committed by right-wing extremists targets Muslims, which represents the level of Islamophobia, hatred and intolerance. The OIC urged Swedish authorities to take the necessary measures against the perpetrators of the hate crime, calling on intensifying efforts to prevent such acts. The Kingdom of Bahrain and the countries of the region are moving forward in consolidating humanitarian values and peaceful coexistence between religions and cultures and rejecting extremism and hatred among nations. More in this report. While the Kingdom of Bahrain and the countries of the region have made great strides in protecting human rights, consolidating the values of human fraternity, peaceful coexistence between religions and cultures, and rejecting extremism, despite extremists in some European countries still carrying out their shameful acts that are not consistent with human values and respect for others. These acts incite religious and racial hatred and constitutes an offense to all religions, beliefs, sanctities and symbols in flagrant violation of international human rights principles and covenants. In response to the United Nations General Assembly resolution on combating hate speech, the international community joined forces to spread a culture of peace and tolerance and to reject calls that provoke hatred or incite discrimination, hostility or violence in order to uphold human brotherhood among all nations and peoples. The coexistence between religions and the spread of peace aims to protect humanity from the scourges of hatred, wars and conflicts. It also aims to achieve acceptance of others which contribute to achieving a just and comprehensive peace among the countries of the world. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil Asumi, delivered a statement on the sidelines of the third session of the third Arab Parliament term in the presence of the Chairman of the Shura Council of Oman, Khalid al Maouli, and praised the role of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in supporting Arab Parliament and supporting its efforts in achieving Arab cooperation. He praised the role of the Kingdom of Bahrain in supporting Arab and Islamic issues and highlighted the role of the Chairman of the Shura Council and the Speaker of the Representatives Council in this regard. Asumi affirmed the Arab Parliament's commitment to continue defending Arab and Islamic issues and combat all attempts that target Arab sovereignty and interference in the internal affairs of countries. The member of the board directors of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Sheikh Hayat bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, received a letter from the president of the International Olympic Committee, Thomas Bach, regarding her appointment as member of the Gender Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Commission, which affirms the status of Bahrain's competencies at the international and regional levels. On the occasion, Sheikh Hayat expressed pride and appreciation in her appointment, hailing the efforts of Bach in developing the work system of the International Committee. She affirmed that will work with the Gender Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Commitment and Inclusion Commission to achieve its goals in coordination with the National Olympic Committee and International Sports Federations and in a way that affirms the goals sought by the International Olympic Committee.